Hello everyone. So this um, video is about how to use quotes and paraphrases. Um, so take a moment before um, you start to think about what is a quote and what is a paraphrase and why do we need to use quotes and paraphrases. Make sure you open the document that says um, using quotes and writing to follow along for a little more information. So I'm going to answer the last question first. Why do we need to use quotes and paraphrases? We need to use quotes to connect our ideas to other people's ideas that are in writing. So sometimes we need to um, give a source for some of the information that we're providing, like a statistic. Um, that would be another reason to use a quote or paraphrase. Um, so. Okay, so do these statements refer to a quote or a paraphrase? They use the same words as the original article. You use your own words, use quotation marks, and give credit to or cite your source. Which ones do these apply to? The first one, use the same words as the original article, is a quote. That means you copy from exactly from a, a source. Using your own words is where you take the information from the source and put it into your own words. That's called a paraphrase. You use quotation marks only for a quote. And as you know in English, the quotation marks both go above the line at the beginning of the quote and the end of the quote. And give credit to or cite your source goes to both um, points quote and paraphrase. We always need to say where our quote or paraphrase came from. So let's take a look at an example of an article of uh, an outline for an essay. Um, this essay is about um, this topic, which is the thesis. There are three reasons why people do not learn a second language, why people do not learn a second language. Okay. Um, so this um, is like a cause essay that's exploring why people don't learn a second language. Number one, some people don't have enough money. They cannot study a second language. That makes sense. Um, in the United States, sometimes there are free English classes, but sometimes maybe in your home country, English classes can be very expensive or second language classes. Number two, the second reason why people do not learn a second language is that learning a second language is very difficult to do well. So that's another reason. And finally, when people already speak a dominant language, they do not need to learn a second language. So those are the three reasons why some people are not bilingual or multilingual. So when you go ahead and look at your paper attached, you will see the steps to using a quote or paraphrase in your writing. And step one is select a quote that connects to your topic. And step two is connect the quote to a point from your paper. And I just wanted to show these that these were the, this is the location that I'm going through that kind of provides a summary for you. Okay. Okay. So that's the first two steps. So let's see how we would apply those steps. So at the bottom here, I have a quote. And the quote says, English is strong as a second language and teaching it has become a growth industry. So you can tell this is a quote because it has quotation marks at the beginning and the end, and it's from another source. So this is the information about the source. So the question is, which point? So we wanna connect the quote to a point. Which point would we wanna connect it to? Think for a minute. Some people always say the, the number three, the dominant language, but I think the best one for this is money, because in this quote, they're telling you that, that teaching English around the world has really, is not just an educational purpose, it's actually more like an industry sometimes, a growing industry, and that kind of gives us the idea that it costs money. So that's an example of finding a quote and then making sure it connects to one of the body paragraphs. Here's another example. This quote says, the language now seems set to have a monopoly as the worldwide medium of communication. Well, maybe we know monopoly means when one company or one uh, entity, one thing controls everything. So this one would connect 
most to number three, when people already speak a dominant language. So this is about how one language, which I think in this case they referred to English, um, dominates other languages, okay? All right, now let's look at an example, a, a paragraph example of how the quote is incorporated. So we start with the topic sentence. Finally, when people already speak a dominant language, they do not need to learn a second language. Then we have kind of a connection. An example of a dominant language would be English. According to Breton, 29, then we have the quote, the language now seems set to have a monopoly as the worldwide medium of communication. This means that people who speak English can already speak to people all over the world. They don't need to learn additional languages in order to communicate widely. Therefore, they don't study a new language. Feel free to pause to read this again. Okay, so you can see in this paragraph some of the next steps in using quotes and paraphrasing. Step three, use the author or organization credentials. And step four, start with a signal phrase. A signal phrase means that we always use the author's last name or family name. We don't use the person's first name. We don't use the person's first name. We always use the person's last name. If it's not a person and it's an organization, we can say the organization's name, like the United Nations or even the New York Times, if the quote is from a source that doesn't have an author given. Okay, these are some examples of signal phrases. There are many more on your handout. So you can see on the handout here, a list of signal phrases and reporting verbs. So when we use signal phrase, we could say according to, and then the person's name or the organization's name in her article or in the opinion of, and then the author's name. If you use according to, you don't need a verb. So we don't say like according to Breton says. No, we just say according to Breton, or we could say Breton suggests. Breton argues or Breton and then one of these other reporting verbs. So take a minute to look over those verbs and if there's something you don't know, you could always look it up or you can even email me and ask me. All right, so those are some examples of signal phrases um, that we could use when we're giving a quote. We never just want to drop the quote in there. We always want to start with a signal phrase. Which one do you think is not an example of a good signal phrase? Hopefully, you said number two. Number two is not a good signal phrase. We don't want to say, there is a quote that says. That's very awkward. We want to be more professional and more academic by using some of the other signal phrases or choosing one. Okay, so here you can see the signal phrase, according to Breton, and then this says parentheses 29. So let's learn a little bit about that. Step four you can see is use quotation marks, and step five means include an internal citation. So an internal citation means that inside the paragraph, you just need to say the author's last name or the organization name. So here's two more examples, okay, where you can see the author's name and the page number before the quote. Or this is an example of a paraphrase where the person put the quote in their own words and they put the author's last name in parentheses at the end. You can see that the the parentheses here are just around the page number because this is part of the sentence, but because this person's name is not part of the sentence, we put it in parentheses. I hope that makes sense. So inside the actual essay, we do not need to put the link, to put the um, title of the article, anything else, just the person's name. Then we know that we can look for them at the end. Okay, we know that we can look at, for them at the end, and I'll come to that in a minute. If we want to say, what is Breton? Where did that come from? What's the origin? Um, we would look at the end of the essay, and I'll be showing that in a few minutes, okay? All right, so step six is extremely important. Explain what the quote means. That means we never want to end a paragraph with a quote. We always want to have something after it to explain the meaning. Here you can see that after the quote, the writer said, this means that, and then they explained 
what, how the quote connected to their idea. And it's okay to use exactly this phrase. This means that. This refers to the whole previous sentence. Hopefully you know that this refers to a whole previous sentence. That usually refer, um, it is not something we could say because it refers to a specific noun, but this refers to the whole previous sentence. So if you put a quote, it's always a good idea to say this means after the quote. Okay, at the end of your essay, you would provide a complete citation, which includes the author's name, um, date, the title, and a link. So there's a link there that shows you how to do it. And you're also welcome uh, to see in this example here. So in the example here, you would see the this is the body paragraph. And inside the body paragraph, we just have Breton, the person's last name. But if someone wants to look for it, they would look at the end of essay for a reference list where we can see the author's name, date, title, pages. This is from a book. Okay, however, so if your article is online, it probably does not have pages, but if your article is online, you should put the link at the end. Okay, so you might not get it right the first time, but this is a good way to begin. So hopefully this has helped you understanding a little bit more um, about how to use quotes in your writing, and we will be trying to use a quote for the next homework, including a quote in our writing. So. Um, Follow the instructions um, there and and yeah, that would be great. Thank you.